So, from what we have already seen, okay, we have our regular climbing points, we can move around them. Now let's uh, add a little bit more uh, info on our points. So we can basically what we're going to do is differentiate between points when uh, the player is going to be playing uh, a bracing animation or a hanging animation like he is over here. Now, of course, this means you need a lot more animations now since you have to handle jumping while in a, lead, in a hanging position and going to the brace position. So to avoid going through the wall as you see over here you need an animation that he's jumping from the braced uh, from hanging position and moving to braced uh, but the other way around you see that it all almost looks uh, completely uh, correct okay since it doesn't have a wall between it of course you can also hide this if you do not have a lot of animations okay so uh, the other thing we're going to do and see is actually create a few more utilities for uh, our climb system that is going to help us uh, with creating uh, the tree and all that and we're also going to see how we can if we are near an edge or a climb point that is actually close to the ground when we are pressing down we're going to be falling off our climbs so let's start with uh, the actual code and well, actually let's see the change I'll do on the animator now basically I went ahead and created a new parameter it's called stance and I made my late channel together I made it into a blend tree and now I have I'm basically blending between braced and hanging okay and I did this the same for the split when his hands are split of course we handle the hands we handle them with uh, a K so it's basically the same animation just mirrored just so that you know there is a little bit of differentiation in the stance of his body from going to idle now of course we're moving up there's not uh, much changes you can do or I didn't have any animations so if you want to have them just make all these this is already a blend tree but you can make a blend tree inside them and for the jump climb animations if I had animations jumping uh, while we're hanging then I will do the same with this so I'll turn this into a blend tree and have control uh, the animation by based on the stance okay and I'm calling it stance since in other uh, third person controllers we have made we use stance to see if we are crouched or not so we basically want to reuse the same parameters now let's go into our script let's go and see uh, before we go into a climb behavior we're going to see on the points okay for our scripts for the point we're going to add a new enum and we're going to call it point type Okay, if we are braced or hanging, I left braced alone uh, at the top, or basically I made first the brace, so all the points I have already set are going to be default on braced, and the ones I want to change are going to be named hanging. And I also need to add this into my point class, okay, point type, point type. So. What I have over here is I can go into any point I want and basically change from brace to hanging. If I left to brace it's going to play the first animation and so on. Let's see the changes we have to do on the client behavior and then let's see the utilities. So the problem with hanging is basically you do not need to use anything that has to do with uh, the IK so what we need to do is come both on IK direct and uh, on linear both of these is basically go and when we are lerping with uh, the IK which is over here okay lerp IK feed direct we're going to add 
an if statement and we're going to say if the target point point type if we're going if we're moving into a point type that is hanging then that means close both the case for the left foot and the right foot else do everything we have already written in the past okay you can still run this but they will not even so so why bother with uh, doing lerps and all that okay since uh, we close the case of course if you find uh, some behaviors that might look wrong yeah just let them play and it's entirely up to you similar to above we'll do the same on lerp a landing side direct okay we just put if statements uh, in most our cases so if the target point is the default one is the bracing then it's going to do whatever it, it was doing otherwise it's just going to close the IK for the fit of course if you notice everything that has to do with movement is pretty much stays the same okay everything else just uh, is the cosmetic touches like IK and all that Lerp IK follow side of course we need to do the same just differentiate these are the same exactly ones we have written before okay that's why I'm not explaining them we're adding again the if statement or yeah you can use a switch statement but I think you're probably only going to have two types of this so it's entirely up to you one is this the other thing we're going to add and of course we need to add it also on a linear okay linear root movement landing side okay layer by k landing side linear the same and we only have to add it in one function so the other thing we need to do is go and decide what animation you're going to play so I'm going to put a bookmark here and we're going to come later to this okay when we're updating the connection transition by type where we're calling from handle climbing and all that we come over here after we have uh, updated our variables based on the connection type we're going to see if the target point we're go going to have a switch statement which is this and depending on the, the point type of our target point if we are uh, the point is braced okay make the stance to be zero not that we do not have any crossfade or anything else we directly have called uh, the change to the animator to be zero okay for hanging we'll do the opposite to one and we can actually uh, close the IK from, from here uh, right away but uh, because we open it later and because we use animation curve to handle the IK weight okay this just alone will not work that's why we have to add the if statements later on down the line as you as we have already seen okay and this controls if what animation you're playing as you notice it's very simple to add uh, differentiations into our code especially the way we have written it okay and hull the weight all the last uh, point we are and here's what I talk about the animation curves because we use this for animation curves okay if we are closing uh, the IK if we are on hanging we basically want to close uh, the IK for the foot okay so even if this goes and changes the influence for the feet then we just come in here and override it and that's basically how you can move into a hanging point or into another one now one more thing we're going to change is on the climb by K where we are updating our K position and basically what we call it this inside the on animator K 
Okay, for the left hand and the right hand, we're going to add some relative offset into our targets. So we're basically just go going to add transfer forward and a little bit of up. So we basically hard code and we add that on the helper's transfer position. We hard code the position of uh, the left hand or the right hand basically since we use both hands it's for both hands too without the offset you will see that since both the targets are kind of at the same position uh, of course on, not on the Y but on the X and Z with the shoulders then his hands uh, tended to go you know to rotate on the opposite side so it didn't look great of course the IK positions are not you can change them okay, you can make them look better instead of just in the air okay and that's why we're only going to add a little bit of offset over here if you want to go further and add more stuff of course you can add it and remove the offset if you are on a braced uh, animation or hanging okay just that just uh, a little bit too much uh, detail policy uh, for us to care about in this video so what's left to do over here since we have a lot more stuff now that needs to be changed and can be changed is to create a few utilities so if I want to connect uh, one grid and another grid like I saw in the previous uh, video we had to manually create it so what we can do is go and actually create a helper which is uh, not this one it's actually this one or at least I thought it was this one. A bit. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to see the helper anyway. So, uh, what we're going to do is also add a few more info on our neighbor connections. So, let's open the scripts. Let's go into our points and for our neighbor we're going to come in here previously we only had direction target and connection type now we're going to add a boolean custom connection so if I go and make a custom connection between one grid and the other then when I'm resetting the grid when I'm resetting the connections it's going to left uh, the custom connections is going to left them untouched okay so you see the custom connections it has already inside its uh, you know inside its tree and it shows because it deleted all the rest but it kept this ones so let's update the connections let's hit refresh and you see the connections once again and it kept our custom connections and another thing we're going to add is basically because we, some of you contacted me and it was kind of weird to see the hips positions so I added an enum and if you want to see where the hips are going to be we're going to control it with this where the hands are going to be okay this is makes a little bit more sense and where the root uh, of the actual root of the player is going to be okay it's a, fir uh, a little bit further down than the hips Okay, probably hands makes uh, uh, the more sense to us but the hips are actually good for debugging mostly so let's leave it at hands let's see all this uh, firstly or yeah let's see them so Where we are over here, we're on our Halon Poly connections. On update, 
we're going to add a few more stuff. We're going to add a new function which is called clear garbage, which is basically going to control and delete the previous dismount points. So when we are creating them again, we're going to be placed on the correct position. We're also going to do a raycast and see and automatically place the dismount points where uh, the ground is when we are dismounting. Okay. Create direction, create connection is going to stay the same. Find dismount candidates, we're going to do a few changes. Find fault candidates will be the candidates where you know you can go directly to the ground just by pressing down. Find hanging points will be doing changes on the points where you actually need to hang. And the threshold is stays the same. So on reset connections before we see all this okay we have a new list where we store any neighbor connection that is uh, we have ticked that it's a custom connection so we create a new list we run through all our points and we store those connections okay we clear all our lists for our neighbors and then we simply go and add any custom connection we have find for that point okay very simple this way we make sure that we do not delete any custom connection we have created if we of course have ticked the custom connection next let's see clear garbage so what this does is we have a new list of dismount points now which is this and we destroy all the game objects and we have also we just clear the list if you want to have and later on which we're probably going to have a lot more garbage into R3 okay it's not exactly garbage but yeah it's just basically stuff we need to, to do manually to clear them manually so we just automate them over here Later on, we're probably going to add a lot more stuff over here. Okay. So, clear garbage is what that does. Find dismount candidates. Okay, we have we find our dismount prefab. We get all the uh, connections. Okay, we find all the candidates. We do all the you know the instantiation and all that we've already done this creates a parent object so that we can dismount all of these the dismount points into one single object we instantiate them okay and here's what uh, we're actually going to start doing differently we instantiate the object we find we start with the target position which will be the wall position the position that parent has plus a little bit uh, forward plus a little bit uh, uh, up so point uh, 1.2 up okay this we're doing this before but after all this we come in here and we fix the position automatically how we by automatically I mean you know uh, a little bit uh, less than having us to go and fix it so what this does is does a raycast and if it finds a position or ground a collider anyway or anything that has a collider on a distance from the place we instantiated the the point and for two points distance then it's going to place it uh, over there but with a 0.04 offset okay it's going to place it over there and then it's going to add it into our dismount list so if we do this again it's going to delete uh, it's going to delete the previous one so if I come over here and change my dismount points to everything else doesn't matter and go back into my points okay reset connections it deletes all the previous dismount points okay so when I click update connections and refresh you see that the dismount points are actually at the correct position 
Of course, the line origin is at hands, so that means your hands, uh, they take the, the line shows where the hands are going to be. That's why it's up there. If we put it at the root, it's probably going to, yeah. The root adds an offset, so it won't be directly under. It's not the correct position also. Probably the hips, yeah, the hips are at the correct position. Okay, because they do not have the offset the root has. But uh, when you are on the dismount point, basically your character is uh, with his feet under the under the dismount point. Okay. Previously, if you remember, these were instantiating a little bit higher up. So we're going to go into. We already had basically a connection for uh, our points. Connection type. We already had the fall connection type. So what we need to do and add is we're going to add into handle points. Okay, we had dismount points. We're going to add fall point, and we're also going to add hanging points, and we're going to tick them uh, where we need it. Okay, so this one going to come over here. I think yeah, it doesn't have a fall point ticked, so the connections are not a fall point. So when I go over here and press down, okay, nothing happens. If I go over here and press down, then the player is just going to drop from the ledge. Of course, it's a little bit rough because uh, basically it lets you control your character while on the air and that's why he rotates. So let's see how we can actually set this up to so that we do not have to go and manually you know change uh, the fault points and add the neighbor connections because what this does it goes on uh, the actual hit point or the actual climb point the actual neighbor connection it goes and creates a new connection that if it's uh, minus one on the y then and connection type is full then it's going to come into the climb behavior that's why I left a note over here. Okay, connection type fall. It's basically the same as uh, the fall off. Climbing is false. In its transition is false. Close all, the <coughs> close all the AK, and go to the state manager and enable the controller and set the animate the animate. Although this will also be set by the state manager. Okay, to be on a... Okay, simple enough. So, let's see the automated part. We have point connections now. We have find fault candidates. Which we have uh, the... The order for this doesn't really matter for the, these three. It just have to be after you have already created connections and created directions. Okay. Just make sure you you have them after that, and of course at the end refresh all. Find fault candidates. We take all our points or our handle points. We find the candidates, which basically on every point that has ticked fall point uh, on it or from our handle points, and we add all the points we have inside our uh, inside the list of candidates. So. For everyone over here, then we can say go and create a new neighbor connection, add the direction minus, uh, you know, add the direction minus one on the Y, set the target because we need to set the target, otherwise, we will be getting null references. Set the target to be the exact same point, its own point, okay, so itself as a target, and change the connection type to fall and add it, uh, finally, add it to the neighbor's list. Now, what this is going to do is basically go and find uh, every point we have ticked to be of on a fall point. It's going to tick that and make it a fall point. What you can actually do, all, though, is uh, let's see. Although I don't know if it's actually going to work right off the bat, 
uh, let's try something else. Okay, so instead of getting, let's get all our points. Okay, not the hundred points, the points themselves. And uh, let's see, let's call this PS. And I want a for its loop. Or its point. P in PS. I know I'm very descriptive. So, uh, let's see. Neighbor, let's call this down. And let's say return neighbor uh, this is going to return a target we want to have uh, we want to pass a direction do we have one return neighbor and uh, return a key hmm. let's write a new one public neighbor let's call this return neighbor uh, from direction and we're going to pass a uh, vector 3 let's call it direction so neighbor return value will be null and we're going to say return the return value and we're going to do a for loop for all our neighbors neighbors Dog count okay and if dot direction equals the dir then return value will be our neighbors i and you can say break it so what this does is going to return we're going to pass a direction and it's going to return us the actual neighbor with the same direction so where were we going to use this is if we go into 100 points connection let's say first and uh, let's say return neighbor from direction the direction we want to use is of course down so minus vector 3 up although I think they have added yeah they have added vector 3 down but yeah anyway force of habit get components in children okay so basically what we have over here we have all our connection all our points and we check if they have a neighbor on you know if they have a connection down so we can say if down equals null if they do not have anything connected on the straight down direction then that means go and add uh, a full point let's say that yeah of course this will make it even even these points that are uh, way up here since they do not have anything that goes down that will take them uh, as they can uh, you know as the, the player can fall directly over, over here you might it might be something that you do not want to do so what we can also do is do a raycast hit and let's say if we choose that so physics uh, raycast the position of course was going to be transformed on position although it doesn't matter uh, this one actually is going to return us this is going to take the heaps it won't matter since the difference is not that great anyway the direction is going to be down out hit of course for a distance of let's say 5 and we're missing a bracket over here okay and this will only 
update a connection with uh, a fault type only if we find the ground uh, on five points beneath us let's make that 10 just to be sure okay let's actually go and test this and I'm going to duplicate one of my grids so I do not want to mess with the rest of it uh, yeah I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to disable the previous uh, grid so let's go over here let's go into our points reset the connections okay we do not have any connections on our point right now our hips okay zero connections so probably this is going to uh, automatically add the fall point and just to be sure let's go into our door or and untick the fall point okay so any point over here it's only going to add a direction so that you can actually jump down only if uh, you know what we have uh, already written works update connections let's hit a refresh of course there's no indicated indication that uh, there's a fall point over here and you see that is actually automatically added uh, a point on minus one and let's see one of these points that is further away from the ground okay although this might actually be closer than five point than ten points and yeah it actually is so let's change that and change this to uh, something like three i guess this will probably let's count this one two and three yeah, so okay, this probably is correct. Let's reset the points. Reset connections, update connections. Let's come over here. And there's no fall point. Okay, so this is how you can actually already uh, automate it even further. So you do not have to go and tick which fall points uh, are up, uh, you know, uh, you want. Of course, as with any procedurally created thing doesn't mean that it's actually going it might be easier to make it doesn't mean that it's actually useful though so you want to review everything the connection tree auto creates now let's see uh, the changes we have on how we can change uh, the hips hands and roots and all that over here line origin it's a new enum, hips, hand, or root. Okay. And on editor handle, when we create the visualization for, uh, you know, for the lines inside our, uh, our editor scene, we're going to have to start with uh, zero in position, both for one and for two. We're going to see if any of the connected points is null, then skip this uh, entry into your for loop and then depending on the connection so if it's hips use the same as we had before if it's for hands it's going to take the parent of the hips so basically where the hands are approximately going to go if it's the root then we're going to add the value we're adding on the root offset or from the climb behavior and that is the value over here okay minus 0.86 on the y uh, not this one haven't seen this one yet editor handle over here okay so if you change the value d depending on the animations then you need to change this one too and everything else is going to be left the same and on draw line visualization we're going to actually do exactly the same but change the appropriate connections okay get the parent and get the positions with a little bit of uh, with the offset we have for the hips from the root when we are playing a climbing animation so the last thing we're going to see is an actual helper to make to help us 
make custom connections. So if I want to connect one point from here to over here, uh, let's duplicate this this one here. Yeah. Okay, I have my client points. Previously, what I needed to do is I needed to lock this editor view and go add it, create one connection that goes from this direction to here and go over here and do the same. So we're going to create a new script which is going to be connection helper. So what I need to do, I still need to lock the screen. So I'm clicking that, but I can set the uh, I can set up the direction. Where actually, I do not want to add this into the handle points. I actually want to add this directly into a point. Let's uh, close the connections since there's no need. Okay, remove the other ones. And what we're going to do is add the connection helper over here. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to say target direction was going to be minus 1 on the X since that's probably minus 1 on the X connection type what I want it to be let's say direct add as custom is it's going to automatically take it as a custom connection so next time it's not going to uh, next time we update this it's not going to delete uh, the connection and what I all you need to do over here is drop my actual target point so I'm going to click this one I have this locked so it stays here and I need to find that point it's this one I'm dropping it over here I click my connection and you will see that it automatically added it into our neighbor list okay so this basically not only added it inside this script in this inside this uh, point it also added the equivalent to the other point so if I unlock this you see that the other point also has the direction on the one of course okay it has the opposite and the connection is actually going to work just fine let's test this okay just a few more utilities to make it less uh, a bit easier Later on, of course, as I said, we're going to see. Okay, it works like a charm. Later on, we're going to see how we can make uh, the connection grids to automatically connect. So we won't even have to do uh, the custom connections, or you might want to have to do them. So let's see the final one, which is the uh, inside my utilities connection helper. If Unity Editor, we only want this to run on the editor. We also have execute in edit mode. Okay, target point, target direction, connection type, add as custom, make connection. If on update we have make connection, immediately close it then, and then create the connection and set the target point to null. To create the connection, we get this point, which is just use git component point. If any of this is null, then return and throw a debug log create the first connection the target will be the target point the target direction is what we have add as custom if we have ticked that it's going to add it as a custom connection connection type the connection type we have added or set okay these neighbors add and then create the the connection from the other way around so the second uh, neighbor connection is going to have the target as the first point we have over here the opposite direction add as custom and connection type the opposite direction sometimes it might not work depending on the direction okay so just keep that in mind I think it's probably going to work in most of the times but keep that in mind in hard-coded directions like uh, in Manhattan directions which is basically not going diagonally it's probably going to work just fine connection type and then we also need to add set dirty for editor utilities for this point and the target point if you do not set this when you hit play then it's going to re to reset your list or it's basically going to reset everything that it has done o over here and I've remembered that we also have to cover the find hanging points which goes immediately after finding our fall points find hanging points 
we get all our points, we find our candidates, so any handle points we have ticked as hanging point. As I said, of course, we can make this automated a lot more, the same way we have made the, the above one. The good thing is, it doesn't matter how many records we're going to do, this doesn't run uh, real time. It's already set, it only needs to run once in an editor. Okay, so you can pretty much, uh, f you are free to do a lot of things that uh, on a runtime environment it will have been a little bit more performance here. Okay, we find our, our candidates and for every hanging point we find, then if we have any candidates for every point we change that uh, point to be hanging. We change, we reset the target position for the hips uh, to be zero. The, we change the y, I just hard code it to 1.5, which is uh, the distance. And okay, it's about this much distance. If I grid, okay. One movement on the grid is one point and you can see that it's almost half a point, 1.5 from where the hands are going to be. And we add that into the task for on the, yeah, we change the hips position to be our target position. Okay, and this goes and automatically changes because you want the hips to be on a different position than uh, when you are actually on the hanging, on the bracing point and on the hanging position and if you do everything correctly then you'll be able to have you'll probably at this point like this okay you'll be able to climb up and jump on a point of course over here you see that it connected and that's why you need to take uh, automatic generation and review it afterwards because it will have made more sense from this point to continually uh, connect to this one instead of jumping into the middle one. Okay, so you need to think of all this stuff. And I just notice because the animation and something went wrong over here, something with the connections because we have duplicated this, uh, not because we have duplicated. Uh, the first climb grid okay uh, the player actually connected into the climb grid that is dis uh, that is disabled so because we parent the player underneath a climb point okay since the route is disabled so it disables the player to so I'm going to delete this one I'm going to delete this ones and hit Reset connections, update connections, Let's hit refresh, and same for the other one, reset connections, update connections, and everything should work fine. Of course, as I noticed over here also, yep. And you see that the automatic generation in this point it's actually kind of sucks okay you see what I mean with uh, automatically or procedurally uh, connecting the points it's not always your best uh, the, the best case uh, solution okay so if you followed everything uh, correctly then you should be able to have something like this and we are able to move from one point to another, connect grids without losing our connections. Okay, and you see that the animation, because we disable the animation when we're jumping, the animation looks kind of wrong. Over here the hands especially go below, but because the hips, depending on the animation, have to go lower, the AK is actually at the, its extremity. Anyway, it's, as I said, it's a nice play, it's a nice starting point. Of course, if you have more animations, then it's only natural, it's going to look uh, way better. So, that's it for the day.
you know what to do like subscribe and if you like what we're doing over here and you want to see it continued then consider supporting me either on patreon or by grabbing a project or two from Gumbro. and i'll see you next time